good evening everybody thank you for joining sunil here welcome to the session can you hear me if yes please type yes in the chat box as a confirmation if you can hear me please type yes in the chat box as a confirmation thank you very much for your responses thank you very much for your responses thank you all for joining actually this particular batch should be taken by some other instructor Actually, I want to hand over the DevOps course to some other instructor, but because of some reason, the instructor has stepped out. So I am back taking the DevOps and AWS course. Thank you very much for waiting for me and thank you very much for joining the session. Thank you very much. Okay. So what's the plan for today? Let us stop the chat. Let us focus on the session. Let us stop the chat. So what's the plan for today? To start with, I'll give you my introduction. I'll have two minutes of introduction. Okay. And then we'll have introduction of the participants. Participants, if you want to have a quick talk, if you want to introduce yourself, you can please raise your hand. We'll allow you uh, to talk. We'll have introduction introduction about the participants. We'll ask what is your background, why are they planning to learn the DevOps. Once we have the introductory session completed, then we'll get into the actual concept of DevOps. Our plan for today is to understand what is DevOps, why DevOps is, in, is very important in the current industry. So what are the course content which will be covered in this particular training? And uh, what is the importance of the DevOps is what you will be understanding from this particular session. To start with, this is Sunil Kopavarapu. I am based out of Hyderabad. I have total 10 years of experience in the IT industry. I have started my career in Oracle applications. And from then, I shifted my technology to DevOps, AWS. I also worked as a programmer in Python and Django framework. So, so this is and uh, close to eight years of experience I'm having in IT industry. So I am the founder of Logic Labs Technologies. So this is a quick introduction about myself. Participants, if you want to introduce yourself, why you're planning to learn the DevOps course, if you have any questions to me, okay, please introduce yourself and you can uh, ask your questions to me. Please raise your hands if you are interested. Okay, perfect. Good evening, Sudarshan. How are you doing? You're from which location? Your experience, okay. please. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm from Singapore. My friend has recommended uh, this course. Okay. He, he learned DevOps. Not DevOps. He was learning some other AWS course from your Logic Labs. So he just recommended me. You don't course. mind me know his name? Uh, his name is Santa. Santa. Okay. Santana, he, was, he was into, I think, AWS, the other course. So okay, I'm, okay, yeah, got it, okay. Okay, uh, the thing is, right, I just want to, uh, I have a question over here. Because, right, I, I, I know some basic concepts of AWS, but I, I don't know about much into the AWS. So, uh, so is it good? Can I just go ahead with this course? Because I, I think this is nothing to do with the AWS too much into the, you know, creating the machines, all those things, right? You are exactly right. This is nothing to do with AWS, okay? It's, it's, it's something well, to do with uh, because right i mean basically into uh, no development and uh, deploying the things into but it's all about the manual process so i just okay. want to go into the automated process that's the thing i'm i'm into here so i think it should not be a problem over here correct it is not at all a problem you are in the right track sudarshan only only just 5% of aws knowledge that we just creating easy to machine handling is required so okay. nothing much required in aws so this complete entire course is focused on devops tools I hope you know we'll be learning on Jenkins, Docker, Ansible, mm -hmm. Git Maven, okay? Helping developers to automate, implementing automation in the development lifecycle, okay? Okay. So okay. you are in the right track, Sudarshan, okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Nice to speak to you. First participant, we are done. Let's have interaction with Mr. Trinath. Good morning, Trinath. You are from which location? Your experience? Any specific reason you are planning to learn DevOps? You are now allowed to unmute and talk. Am I audible, listening? Yes, you are audible. Uh, actually, I am your old student. Like two years back, I have learned uh, AWS and DevOps from you. Both of us. Uh, AWS and DevOps. Okay. So okay. I just I want to know like is this course covers both the things or anything else from that like I have learned AWS uh, from you like there are set of services which you have explained us at that okay. time 
Apart from that, in DevOps, there are a set of DevOps tools where we will be working in uh, AWS uh, platform. I mean, like Correct. you are right. This, per this particular course will not teach you AWS. Okay. okay. This is not at all an AWS course. This is a DevOps course. The set of DevOps tools we will be implementing on AWS platform. Okay. So, Trinath, as you have seen, you have learned both the courses. The DevOps course, what you have learned, something similar to the same set of tools we will be learning here again. Okay. 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 Any specific reason why are you planning to repeat? Uh, just I want to know, like, anything okay. uh, like else more uh, in covering in this, like that. Yes, uh, there's a lot of change in the syllabus compared to two years. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With, the, with your course only, I have like uh, switched my course, like, uh, switch my technology from like uh, from Java to DevOps. Earlier. Oh, very good. Very oh, good. Yeah. Past two years, I have been on DevOps. You are already working on DevOps and any specific yeah. reason? Uh, why I am not doing? completely working on DevOps. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I am into like uh, site reliability engine, like SRE. Oh, very good, very good. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, Trinath, nice to speak to you. Thank you very much. We are able to see the success story right in the beginning yeah. of the session. Thank you very much. Right, thanks. Ravindam. Yeah, hi. Hi, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, actually, um, I'm 12 years experience, actually, 12 years experience in production support. So I have no basic of Unix and Oracle, uh, so those uh, basic okay. worries because of uh, production support. So I, I, I am currently, I'm in AWS project, but uh, in AWS, I'm working as a user level only. Okay. So in our project, my dev teams are using these tools, actually. Uh, okay. So okay. I am interested okay. to learn uh, DevOps. In production support, which product you are working? Uh, product in the sense, uh, like you're asking the technology, what are they yeah. using? Okay. Uh, Docker they are using. Okay. Uh, okay. Kubernetes uh, they are planning to uh, implement soon, mm -hmm. and uh, they are using Kafka, okay. and um, uh, like uh, Git and everything. It's normal. And, mm -hmm. uh, Jenkins they are using. So do you know all these tools, or you are completely new to it? Uh, I I know, but I am not fully you know. I have not get any courses actually okay. uh, learn, uh -huh. but I'm interested to learn. But uh, and interested to nowadays there is no production support uh, that much actually. Uh, mostly okay. everything moving to the uh, automation. Yeah, automation mm -hmm. like DevOps, any other mm -hmm. uh, tool, uh, production. You are in the right track, Ravinder, because yeah. you belong to operations team on a high level. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. so nowadays. Yeah. Current year, there is no right, not much production support is reducing actually. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So dependency on the production support is reducing. So it's good. Uh, internal, you can try for internal job change okay, within the automation because your automation is currently using this kind of DevOps tools. It will be an added advantage to you, Ravinder. Okay. How yeah. do you know about this score, this institute? Uh, yeah, I know, I already uh, know actually AWS and I get a recording and learn actually. Okay. okay. Uh, so two, two, three years before. Okay. Um, but I don't attend that uh, full live session. Live training. Uh, this okay. time I'm planning. This time you're attending the live training. Yeah. Welcome to the session. Thank you, Ravi. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, one more. Uh, you're from experience. which so, location? I'm from Chennai. Okay. So uh, after completing this course, uh, so uh, we can be able to uh, get on the, the interview, interviews Correct. and. Uh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you guide on the interview or we will uh, guide you what kind issue. of uh, projects notes to be placed. Okay. Okay. What kind of task you have to explain it in the interview. Okay. Mm -hmm. We already have a recently completed one workshop on Sunday. We'll be conducting few workshops on DevOps projects. If that you can showcase, that's more than. Okay. 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 So, uh, so I'm right, but right. I mean, I, I am for production support, uh, engineer, no uh, moving to DevOps. Okay. Right. Uh, no, anybody can move to DevOps, not okay. production support, <laughs> okay, quality okay. team, testing team. People from no experience also can get into DevOps. Okay. Only okay, focus, okay, okay. focus in understanding the concept is going to work in practice. Okay, so one more question actually. So in DevOps, integrate programming and knowledge actually. No coding is required in DevOps. Okay. Okay, because we are not developers. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. yeah. Basic shell scripting is advantage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Good morning, Benjamin. How are you doing? Thank you for joining the session. Good morning, Sully. How are you? Good evening. Actually, good morning here in America. Good evening in the India. How That's why I'm, I'm doing with how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Welcome to the session. Uh, currently, I am in the US and uh, I have uh, four years in uh, hardware infrastructure. Currently, I work with uh, the AWS, uh, the hardware that you guys install everything on is what we build. So my work with them is to debug and find the errors of any hardware and then fix it. I've been doing this since 2020. So okay. I think I want to uh, change my domain so that uh, basically work from home instead of going to site all the time. All the best, Benjamin. Definitely this technology will help you. Okay? Thank you. Good luck. Couple of more calls so before getting to the subject. Asha, how are you doing? Your location, your experience. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, hello, my name is Asha. Uh, I'm from uh, Mumbai, Maharashtra. Uh, I have 10 years of experience. Uh, out of 10, uh, 6 years of experience as a business analyst, as an operation part, and uh, production support. And uh, 4 years of experience as a middleware of middleware administrator. Uh, Which tool are you using I'm in middleware? Uh, WebLogic. Okay. And uh, currently, I'm working with the uh, banking domain and um, State Bank of India project. And uh, one of my friend has suggested to join your course. Okay. And I think he's also uh, joined your uh, AWS on DevOps. May, may I know his name? Uh, his name is also Sunil. Okay, his name is also Sunil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All the best, Tasha. Okay, so you are already in the right track. You are in the middleware. Okay, so you yeah, belong yeah. to operations team. Okay, so you have yeah, a good yeah. experience. It will be easy for you. Okay. okay, thank you. So have yeah. you, did you research about DevOps? Did you learn anything anywhere? Sorry? What do you know about DevOps? Did you do some research work in knowing what is DevOps? Uh, yeah, I have done because uh, currently I'm working on uh, agile methodology. So I think DevOps is the advanced uh, advanced version of uh, agile. agile. It is like catalyst yeah. to agile. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Many more participants wants to have a talk, uh, but because of time limitations. So let's interact with the last participant, Mr. Udisha. Hello, sir. Uh, this is Udisha Agarwal from uh, South Carolina, USA. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please proceed. So uh, I'm just a uh, just a fresher uh, in IT industry. Like uh, I want to learn, uh, you know, I want to go in IT industry. So that's why I'm here. So yeah. Okay. Do you know any skills now? Skills like I join. I attended like Selenium with Java. Actually, I got my you know working uh, working visa uh, recently, like last last year. So that's why I'm looking for. Uh, job but uh, my husband want to know go in IT so I completed my selenium with Java and uh, I know uh, these names are very familiar for me but I don't know much about these technology which technology like these all these uh, DevOps I know what is DevOps I know Jenkins but I don't know much about it okay okay so there are a lot of technologies uh, you already have learned Selenium. Why are you not trying for Selenium with Java? Yeah, so. actually, I'm not getting a uh, good opportunity in uh, testing field automation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So did your vendor any recommended to learn DevOps? Uh, not really they recommended, but uh, I want to switch because, you know, there are less options in uh, automation. Okay. What I realized, because I'm not getting called that much in that. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Agarwal. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, participants, let's there are many more uh, participants raising their hands, but uh, as our plan is to stick to the agenda for today's session, we'll have interaction in the upcoming sessions also. Okay. So, today's session is all about understanding clearly what is DevOps. To understand what is DevOps, I will spend some time explaining you about software development lifecycle. Before getting into the concept of DevOps, I will spend some time explaining about software development lifecycle, SDLC. I hope you, most of you already know the software development lifecycle, but on the high level, I'll explain about what is mean by SDLC. Please have a look at it. You have a client. Assuming in a banking client, like I say, say bank needs an internet banking application. A client, like a banking client, like I say, say bank needs an internet banking application to their customers so that the customers can log into the internet banking and perform some banking operations. So clients approach software companies like client approaches software companies like Infosys or TCS or whatever it is. The banking client, I say, say bank, reaches to the software companies like Infosys, Wipro, TCS, whatever it is. Clients will give the requirement. My dear Infosys, this is, we are a bank. We are having these many number of branches, these many number of account holders. And this is my plan. The customer should be able to perform login to internet banking. They should be able to apply for credit cards. They should be able to apply for loans. They should be able to download the statement. They should be able to create fixed deposits. So these are all the functionalities. So clients will always approach IT companies. Client will always approach IT companies and provide the requirements. The software development companies like Infosys, Wipro, TCS, whatever it is, takes the requirements from the client. Client is nothing but the customer for the software company. Client is nothing but the customer for the software company. So software companies take the requirements from the client, understand the requirements clearly, Develop the product, develop the product and deliver it to the customer, customer or client. Are you understanding? Clients use the requirements. Software development companies take the requirements and typically develop the application and deliver it to the client. This is what happens in the industry. When software companies like Infosys Wipro take the requirements from the client, they have to follow a professional approach. There is a professional streamlined approach in building a particular product or a project. Companies cannot develop a product in ad hoc manner. There is a step-by-step -step professional approach right from accepting the requirements from the client and delivering the product to the customer. A professional approach of building the product and delivering it to the customer is called as SDLC. The approach of building a particular software product. A professional streamlined, documented, industry standard approach of building a particular product as per the requirements and delivering it to the client is nothing but the step-by-step -step process is nothing but software development lifecycle. It's called as software development lifecycle. So there are several approaches. There are several approaches. There are several models available in the industry using which we can take the requirements and deliver it, the deliver the product to the customer. But I am restricting myself to two important models. Most widely used model is waterfall model, which is an outdated one. And the most widely used now is the agile model. There are several models in the software development life cycle. Several models are nothing but several approaches. We can de develop the product and deliver it using waterfall model. We can develop the same product and deliver it using agile model. There is a spiral model. We have B model. There are several models in the industry. There are several models in the industry. You can companies can up use any of the model and uh, deliver the product and uh, build the product and deliver it to the customer. But 
the most widely used, the most popular model in the software development lifecycle as of now is Agile model. The most popular one, the most widely used model in the software development lifecycle as of now is Agile model. But before getting into Agile model, I also want to discuss about waterfall model, the first model in the software development lifecycle, first of its kind. So I'll be discussing how the product is built and delivered using waterfall model. Waterfall model is an outdated model. Currently, no industry is using waterfall model because waterfall model is suffering with some disadvantages. So we'll discuss about waterfall model. On a high level, we'll understand what is the problem with the waterfall model. And then we'll also discuss about agile model, why agile is popular. Agile is widely used. Agile is the leading model in the software development lifecycle as of now. So we'll understand and the advantages of Agile model. So after discussing about waterfall model and Agile model, then you will understand the importance of DevOps. If I directly jump into DevOps, it will not be very clear what exactly DevOps will do. So that's the reason let's spend some time before getting into DevOps, let's have some spend time understanding waterfall model and agile model, understanding software development lifecycle first. To start with waterfall model, the old one of the oldest model, the oldest model in the software development lifecycle is waterfall model. Waterfall model is used probably 30 years back, close to 20 to 25 years back, waterfall model is used. Right now, industry is not using waterfall model because waterfall model is suffering with some disadvantages. So let's have some light on waterfall model, how exactly requirements are taken and how exactly the product is delivered using waterfall model. Let's have to, let's let, let's understand on a high level. This is the step-by-step -step approach of how the product is built and delivered to the customer in the waterfall model. As you can see in the slide, the first model is, the first stage in the waterfall model is requirement stage. Not only in the waterfall model, every model starts with the requirements. Every model, not only waterfall model, every model starts with the requirement stage. Understanding the requirements is very, very key in product development process. If the requirements understanding is, is wrong, we end up delivering the wrong product to the customer. The first stage in the waterfall model is the requirement stage. In the requirement stage, there will be regular meeting between the clients and the IT company. In the requirement stage, there will be regular meetings between the client and the IT development company. Let's say, let's say, assuming the client is an ICC bank, there will be regular meetings with the ICC bank, understanding the banking requirements. The first stage is requirements. How, if there is an existing application, they will study the existing application. We'll understand what is the requirements, what are the features they are expecting, how exactly the product needs, what is expectations of the customer. There should be regular meetings and proper understanding about the requirements. Assuming requirements has been completed, the IT company is very clear what exactly the client is expectations from. Once the requirements is completed, the next stage, as you can see in the slide, is analysis part. What happens in the analysis part? In the analysis part, the technology components are decided. The technology components will be decided. What does that mean? Should it develop using Python? This particular banking application should be developed using Python or should be developed using Java or should be developed using .NET technology? What database needs to be used? Should we use Oracle database for this particular project or should we use uh, MongoDB? Or should we use SQL Server? What should be the front-end technology? What should be the back-end technology? What should be the middleware? 
what should be the middleware? Should we develop using it? Should we deploy it using web logic? Or should we use JBoss? Or should we use Tomcat? Or should we use web, web sphere? The technology components are decided in the analysis part. What should be the front end technology? What should be the back end technology? What should be the framework? So this happens in the analysis part. After completing the analysis part, the next stage in the waterfall model is, as you can see, the design stage. As you can see, the third stage is the design stage. The project is divided into modules. The complete project is divided into modules. Assuming a banking application, savings account one module. Corporate account one module, NRI banking one module, wealth banking one module, credit card one module, loans one module, privilege banking is one module. The entire project customer care has one module. The complete project is divided into modules. Once the entire project is divided into modules, the user interface, how exactly the user interface looks like. How should be the user interface? What should be the user experience? What should be the workflow? How the database should be designed? Not only the front end design, the back end design. How the table should be designed? How the table should be linked with each other? What should be the relationships? How the workflow should happen? When I click on a button, how, how the user should move to the next form? So you'll have a complete exposure on how exactly we'll have a you will you will have a you can visualize how exactly this application will looks like on paper. In this design stage, we can experience how exactly application work application could be in the in the on paper. This happens in the design stage. Architects will be involved in this particular design stage. After completing the design stage, after completing the design stage, here comes the role of a programmer, the coding part. Here comes the role of a programmer, coding part. Developers will jump into action, whether it is Python, if it is Python, Python developers, if it is Java, Java developers, developers will jump into action. They take the documents from the design team. They take the inputs, developers will take the inputs from the design team. So as per the design, they start developing the code. They start creating the pages. They start how exactly the validation should happen and how exactly development, the development program starts. Here comes the role of a programmer. This activity is called as coding part. Once the coding has, I'm talking on a high level, on a high level, a brief overview. Once the coding is completed, once the application is ready, obviously we will not provide that particular application to the client. We will be performing testing. Once the application is ready, testing team will jump into action. Testing team will check whether the application is perfectly working or not as per the requirements given by the client. Is the application behaving as per the requirements given by the client? The different types of testing, but this is what the in on a high level application will be tested to make sure the application is perfectly working before delivery. Assume testing has been completed. Participants, assume that the testing has been completed. Assume that everything is okay. Development developers has perfectly developed the project and testing is also passed. Everything is ready. If testing team provides a clearance saying that the application is perfectly good as per the requirement, then we deliver the particular product to the customer. This approach of building a particular product and delivering it to the client is called as waterfall model. A very meaningful, straightforward, simple approach, stage by stage manner is called as waterfall model. Waterfall model is used probably 20 years back, 25 years back.
Okay. So at that particular time, waterfall model was used, but now waterfall model is not used. As we had understanding about how exactly waterfall model is and how exactly the product is built using waterfall model requirements, analysis, design, coding, testing, and delivery. Simple and straightforward. The waterfall model is suffering with some disadvantages. So on a high level, let's uh, spend some time understanding the problem with the waterfall model. In this particular waterfall model, there is dependency between one team to other team. There is a dependency between one team to other team. Example, testing team will wait for the coding team to complete the code. Are you understanding? When the testing will start? Only when the coding part has been completed. There is a dependency between testing and coding. Testers will start their work only when the programmers have completed their work. So testing team will wait for the coding team. To come. The, the more delay done by the coding team, testing gets delayed. The main problem is delay. One team will wait for the other team to complete their job. Testing team will wait for the coding team to complete their job. Coding will start only after completing the designing of the project. So coding team will wait for the design team to complete their job. Let's say, assuming that there are 30 developers involved in the project for a specific client. The project manager has given an estimate that they need six months of time to complete the coding part. This is the estimate given by the project manager. Number of resources required for this particular client is 30 developers and the time taken, time required for building a particular product is six months. Let's say design team, they have given an estimate that they need one month of time to complete the design part. The design team has given an estimate that they need one month time to complete their job. So these 30 developers will wait for one month. Look at the waiting time. One team will wait for the, its previous team to complete their job. Design team will, will wait for the analysis to be completed because design changes. The design changes if you use MongoDB. How the database is designed, there is no SQL. If it is a relational database, the design changes. The user interface changes from particular application to actual libraries will change. So the design team will wait for the analysis team to take the decision. Analysis happens only after taking the requirements from the client. You have the entire workforce ready, but one team will be waiting for the other team to complete their job. Your testing team should wait for six months. Because in the waterfall model, the second stage will start only after completing its previous stage. That's the model. One stage will start only after completing its previous stage. Testing should start only after completing the coding part. Coding should start only after completing the design. There's a lot of dependency. There's a lot of waiting time. If the code, if the development team Delays their work, so the code testing team will also get delayed. It's very, very tough to meet the deadlines because of these dependencies. You cannot meet the deadlines which are given to the customers because of this particular dependency between one team to other team. This is the main problem with the waterfall model. Very difficult to meet the deadlines. One team will wait for its previous team to complete their job. And one more important disadvantage is that in the waterfall model, waterfall model does not encourages the clients to give new requirements, no new requirements. Freeze the requirements. Waterfall model will freeze the requirement. Assuming requirements has been completed on January 1st. Assuming there will be regular meetings on the, after completing all the meetings, they have taken a requirements on January 1st. All the meetings are completed. As per the 
date mentioned, they freeze the requirements. Basing on the freezing the requirements, the analysis happens, design happens, coding happens, testing happens, and deliver. We'll deliver the product as per the meetings, as per the requirements, which are freezed on January 1st. Waterfall model does not encourage us the clients to give new requirements. They freeze the requirements. This is one of the most important disadvantages. That's the reason it is not suitable in the current era. In the current industry, the applications are dynamic. Customers, clients keeps on changing their requirements because the business is very dynamic. The model, the software development model should be robust enough to take the new requirements on the embed into the existing requirements and deliver. That's how the robust enough model should be. But waterfall model does not encourage the clients to give new requirements. It freezes the requirements. Let's say after one month, if the client says that, okay, they want to introduce one more new feature. Let's, for example, the UPI has been introduced. GST has been introduced. Let's say UP has been introduced. There's some more feature has been introduced. Some international changes has been happened. The model does not take the new requirements. This is one of the most important disadvantages. So very difficult to meet the deadlines. It, there, there's a lot of dependency. There's a dependency between one team to other team. Does not encourage the clients to give new requirements. Because of these reasons, waterfall model does not suit in the current industry. Clear? Clear about this? Let's have a look at it. The problem with the dot, it is very difficult to estimate the time because of dependencies. As there is dependency, the cost of the project gets increases. The more that they the most the cost of the project increases. Once an application is in testing, there is no concept of going back. Waterfall, as the name suggests, waterfall, water should move from top to down. Water always falls from top down. There's no concept of water going back. There's no concept of going back and changing the design. If, say, if, the, if the development team says that the design is very complex, there's no concept of going back. You need to move forward. There's no concept of changing the requirements, going back and changing the requirements. As the water falls from top to bottom in the same way, we need to move forward. That's all. There's no concept of showing, going back and changing the requirements or changing the design. Okay, which is not at all suitable in the current industry. Once the application is in testing, there's no concept of going back and changing something which is not well at the concept stage. It is not good for complex and object oriented projects. Most important thing, this is not suitable. This model is not suitable where the requirements where the requirements are at moderate to high risk of changing. When the requirements, they, when there is a chance that the requirements are frequently getting changed, this water for waterfall model does not suit to this kind of projects. So this is the understanding about how the waterfall model. So waterfall model is successful 20 years back or 25 years back, no doubt. First of its kind, the first model, in fact, in the software development life cycle but does not suit now. The most widely used model now that's most in demand is Agile model. Let's understand how the product is built using an Agile model. Why Agile is very popular. The way the product is built and delivered to the customer in the Agile model is completely mind-blowing and different. Let's spend some time understanding the Agile model. Look at the way the product is delivered. Look at this theory. You have to pick up a few important terminologies from this theory. Agile is also called as incremental model. Look at this term, incremental model. Software is built in incremental and rapid cycles. Each result is a small incremental releases build on its previous functionality. Each release is thoroughly tested and the quality is maintained. Agile emphasizes on iterative, look at the terminology, iterative, iterative is repeated, incremental, evolutionary. It emphasizes on incremental, small releases, rapid cycles, evolutionary development. What is this incremental model? What do you mean by rapid cycles? 
what do you mean by iterative? Okay, so let's try to understand this terminology by taking an example. This is what our understanding the client, like I say, the bank needs this kind of internet banking application to the customers. This is what the customer client expectation is. I see the bank is expecting this kind of internet banking application to their customers. What happens in the waterfall model? What happens in the waterfall model? I'm, I'm showing you a comparative analysis so that you'll understand how agile is different. In waterfall model, the first stage is requirements. Software companies will take the requirements from the personal banking department. They take the requirements from the privileged banking department. They take the requirements from the wealth banking. They take the requirements from the private banking. They take the requirements from the NRI banking. They take the requirements from the business, business uh, department. They take the requirements from all the teams. I'm talking about waterfall model. There will be regular meetings with the personal banking team. There will be regular meetings with the privileged banking team. There will be regular meetings with the wealth banking. There will be the regular meetings with, between each and every module. And once they complete all the requirements, they take the requirements, then they declare saying that the requirements has been completed. Stage by stage. Once they take the requirements of all the modules, then they freeze saying that the requirements has been completed. This happens in the requirement stage. After the requirements, what is the next stage? Analysis. Analysis is not specific to module. They, they freeze the technology components. After the analysis, the next stage is the design stage. Design team will jump into action. They take the design. They, uh, they, 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 the design team will jump into action. They complete the design of personal banking module. They complete the design of privileged banking module. They complete the design of wealth banking. They design privileged private banking. They design the NRI banking. They design the business banking, the small and medium scale enterprises. They design corporate module also. And once the design has been completed, next they declare saying that the design stage has been completed. Stage by stage approach is what our model. After design, coding. Developers will jump into action. They complete the development of personal banking. They take the they complete the development for privileged banking. They take the they develop the uh, code for wealth banking. They take the code for private banking. They take the they develop the code for NRI banking. They complete all the coding for all the modules, and then they declare saying that the coding stage has been completed. Next testing team will jump into action. They complete the testing for personal banking. They complete the testing for Privileged banking, they complete the testing for wealth banking, private banking. Like this, they complete the testing for all the modules and then they declare saying that the testing of the particular project has been completed. Assuming positive testing is perfectly working and there are no errors, everything is perfect, then they deliver the entire project to the customer. They deliver the entire modules at one single issue and the entire application is delivered to the customer. This is what happens stage by stage happens in the waterfall. This is what happens in the waterfall. Whereas in the agile model, the approach is completely different. Look at how the product is built using agile model. The same product, how is it different from waterfall model? Let's try to understand. In agile model, IT company will take the requirements from the personal banking. Requirements team will take the requirements from the personal banking. Module 1. Once it has been completed, requirements team will move on to next module, privileged banking. When the requirements team is busy with the privileged banking, design team will jump into action. They start designing the personal banking module. Did you understand? Two teams are in action. Requirements team is in action, busy with taking the requirements of second module. Design team is busy designing the first module. Let's say requirements of the second module has been completed. The requirements team will move on to third module. 
when requirements team will move on to third module design team has been completed designing the module one design team will be busy taking the taking the will be involved in designing the second module as design has first module design has been completed coding team will jump into action the developers will start coding the module one entire workforce in action requirements team is busy taking module three requirements design team is busy taking module two designing coding team is busy coding module one look at the next iteration requirements team busy taking the requirements of module four design team busy designing the module three coding has been completed coding team busy coding the second module testing team they will be testing on first module entire workforce is in action you are breaking the dependencies in the next iteration requirements team busy taking the nri module design team busy designing the private banking coding team busy coding the wealth banking testing team busy testing the second module first module testing has been completed we'll deliver the first module to the customer what agile says incremental there is no hard and fast rule that the entire module should be delivered at once at least customer is happy they can experience how exactly they can perform end user testing and they can experience how exactly the first module looks like evolutionary iterative incremental Agile encourages the clients to give requirements. They'll experience the module one if they give the new requirements. They'll incorporate and repeat the cycle with respect to new requirements. Are understanding module by module they'll deliver. There's no hard and fast rule. The entire project should be delivered at once. Now, what is your experiencing? You're experiencing the entire workforce is action. When the entire workforce is in action, it is very very easy to meet the deadlines. It's very, very easy to meet the deadlines. And the Agile model encourages the clients to give the new requirements. When client gives the new requirements, we'll repeat the same cycle. Requirements team take the new requirements. Design team will redesign it. Coding team will take the new requirements and achieve the coding team. Again, testing happens and again, we will deliver the new requirements to the customer. So such a robust model is Agile model. When you compare with any other model, the most robust model is the Agile model. So if the waterfall model, <clears throat> using waterfall model, the IT company takes two years to deliver the particular project. The same project, the same feature, using Agile model, you can just deliver in one year. It's such a faster rate. You can expect the products to be delivered in Agile model. My dear participants, am I clear explaining you how exactly what whole model is different from the Agile model? The problem with the Agile model, why the Agile model is not used because it does not encourage the clients to the requirements. There's a lot of dependencies. I hope you have understood how Agile is completely different. I hope you have understood the terminology called it there to incremental. The chat is open now. It's very, very easy to meet the deadlines. Am I right? Perfect. This is what Agile model is. Now the problem is, what are we interested in? What are we interested in? We are interested in DevOps. How is it related to Agile? So we are here to learn DevOps. Why are we spending on understanding this Agile? You have to have some understanding about Agile model. Every DevOps engineer should spend some time gathering some information about Agile model. When compared to other models, Agile model is speed enough. If other model, other model, if you can see the compared to analysis, what form model is taking two years, the same product with same quality, you can deliver it in just one year time. But now, now the industry is client use the requirements they are not ready to wait for one year one year is a long time 
clients use the requirements now they want the products to be delivered in just four months of time such a faster rate clients are expecting their applications to be built and delivered when compared to at waterfall model agile model is speed enough no doubt when compared to older models agile model is speed enough but now even one year is very long time clients are expecting the clients will give the requirements and they want expect they want the products to be delivered in just 3 months or 4 months at such a faster rate the clients are expecting their applications to be built speed is very important and you can achieve speed only through automation so to satisfy the requirements if you want to build an applications in just 3 months or 4 months of time top 10 it companies in the world have done research work top 10 it companies have done a research work for 5 years to understand the word called delay IT companies have done a research work to understand the term called delay. What is causing the delay in the software development life cycle? Whether it is waterfall model, agile model, some other model may come up in future. So they have done a research work to understand the delay. After doing the research work, they came to the problem statement and they have identified why it is taking years together irrespective of whether it is agile model, but still one year is long time comparatively. They have done research work to understand the reason why there is a delay in the software development life cycle, even though it could be bought for more. Now, look at this. The problem, the main problem why there is a delay in the software development process is because of this particular statement. In spite of any model, the main problem with the delay in the software development process is the gap between development team and operations team. The main problem which is causing the delay in meeting the deadlines of the customers, customers are not ready to wait for years together, they want the application to be delivered in much more faster rate. That can be possible only when you fill the gap between development team and operations team. This is the problem. So there's a gap between development team and, customer and operations team. Very important, my dear participants. If you want to understand the statement gap between development team and operations team, you have to understand what do you mean by development team. You have to understand what do you mean by operations team. If you are very clear with what do you mean by operations team, if you are very clear what do you mean by development team, this statement will be very clear. The problem is the gap between development team and operations team. Okay, let's try to understand this sentence. Let's try to understand this statement. What do you mean by development team? It's very easy. It's very easy to visualize. The development team is nothing but group of developers. Since you are right. If it is a Java project, group of Java developers is called as a development team. If it is a Python project, group of Python developers is development team. Yes, you are right. Development team is easy to visualize. Anybody can understand what is development team, what will be the day-to-day -day responsibilities of the development team. They take the requirements and develop the code. They develop the application. That's what the responsibility of the development team. Everybody are aware of it. All of us know what will be the role of a developer. It is very important for us to understand what do you mean by operations team? Ops team. What is operations team? What will be the day-to-day -day responsibilities of an operations team? Let's try to understand. Look at this. Let's spend some time understanding operations team. Please look at this, my dear participants. Assume a small, assume a small IT company of hundred employees. There are many small companies of hundred employees, right? Small companies of hundred employees, fifty employees. Assuming a small software company of 100 employees. 
100 billable resources for a particular client. A small company of 100 resources working for one particular client. In this 100 employees, do you think right from first employee to the last employee, everybody is a developer? Participants? Especially participants who are not from IT industry, people who are planning to get into IT industry from non-IT, which is very important. Don't be under impression that right from first resource to last resource, right from first employee to last employee, don't think that everybody working in the software industry are developers. It's not the case. All big IT giants like TCS, Wipro, Infosys, they post that they are having close many number of employees worldwide. Thousands and hundreds of thousands of employees worldwide. Do you think every every employee working in the IT company for a particular project is a developer? It's not the case. Don't be under the impression that every person working in the IT industry is a developer. It's not the case. In our example, if there are 100 employees, for our understanding purpose, probably 50 employees could be developers. Okay, 50%, assuming that 50% are developers. So, then what about the rest of other people who are not developers? But they are billable. They will be paid salaries. They are very important. Without this set of people who are not developers, you cannot make progress in the developmental activity. There are a group of people who are developers. There are a group of people who are not developers. They are very important, but still they are very important and critical. That's why company is hiring this non-development team also. In the context of DevOps, these set of resources who does not belong to development team are, but they are very important and critical, are called as operations team. In the context of DevOps, this set of resources belongs to operations team. Non-developers comes into operations team. So, Neil, who will be the operations team? You said they are important. Why they are important? What will be their day-to-day -day responsibilities? Let's some time. Let's spend some time understanding the day-to-day -day responsibilities of an operations team. It is whose responsibility to maintain servers, firewalls, storages, networks. Do you think Java developer will be doing it? There should be few skilled resources who are very strong in maintaining security. Making sure that the servers will be running 24 by 7. You need resources, right? Without this, development team cannot even access to the dev server, cannot get access. It is Rose's responsibility to configure the storage, configure the network, configure the servers, monitoring the servers 24 by 7, monitoring the traffic. It is whose responsibility to respond to outages because of any reason server is down. Development team will happily send a mail saying that the servers are not working and they go for a break. It is whose responsibility to break the head to make sure that the servers are responding to the servers are running to the Who will be responding to this outage operation state? Who will be providing security? Cyber security team. It is whose responsibility to maintain version controlling, change controlling code, fix the back disaster and backup. Recovery, maintaining the disaster recovery side, taking the backups regularly, full backups and incremental backups. It is whose responsibility to provide production support. Development team completes it, the delivery happens, the product is live. There should be people who will be supporting once the product is ready, production support. Without this, do you think an IT company will work? Tell me. Database administrators, middleware administrators, infrastructure resources. Network administrators. They're very critical. Do not be under the impression that only developers are great. It's not the case. These operations team is also very, very important and critical for every IT industry. 
And the problem with the delay in the software development life cycle is because of the gap, misunderstandings or gap between development team and operations. You may have a question, Sunil. Can you give me a small example? Uh, what is the gap between? Can you give me a small scenario where there is a gap in development team? Can you give a small scenario? Look at this. Let's say development team needs an Oracle instance, Oracle database instance. They need a backend. Assuming they are using SQL Server, now they want to drive with Oracle Server. Now it is whose responsibility to provide Oracle database server to the development team. Tell me. Development team, let's say Java developer needs Oracle database. They want to experience how the application is working with respect to Oracle database. Now it is whose responsibility to provision Oracle database and give it to the Java team. Do you think developers will do it? No. Developers will happily shoot an email to the operations team saying that we need Oracle database so and so version. It is a responsibility of DBA, stands for Database Administrator Responsibility, to take the requirements of the development team as per their version. They will provision the infrastructure and they provide the login details to the development team. At that credential, they will be using for application connectivity like JDBC connectivity and the connectivity habits. And then they start developing the project. So who is responsible for provisioning the instances? DBA. Once the application is ready, they want to de deploy to web logic. Middleware engineers will come into action. Every strong communication dependency between development and operations. Assuming DBA is only for a period of one week, there's no other DBA replacing. So what is happening? Tell me, delay. It's causing the delay. Assuming DBA skilled resources are not available. If the skilled resources are not available, the infrastructure is not available. Then the operations team will send a mail to the development team. You don't give us ad hoc requirements. We'll provide you provision. We'll provide you within five working days. This is the way the communication happens between development team and operations team. Finally, it is causing the delay. There are several cases where the cause of development team and operations team is causing the delay in the IT industry. That has evolved into a new concept called DevOps. The term DevOps is derived from two important terminology, development team and operations team. The term DevOps is derived from two important terms, development team and operations team. Typically in the IT industry, there will be two teams, development team and operations team. If DevOps methodology is implemented, try to understand the statement. If DevOps methodology is implemented in software development lifecycle, DevOps is a methodology, it's a method. That method should be followed in the software development lifecycle. If DevOps methodology is implemented in the software development lifecycle, there will be three teams, development team, operations team, DevOps team. Traditionally, it will be two teams, development team and operations team. Because of DevOps methodology, when clients implement, when IT companies decide to implement DevOps in the software development lifecycle, there will be three teams, development team, operations team, and DevOps team. It is a DevOps engineer responsibility like you and me who are aspiring for DevOps is to be collaborating between you. You are responsible for collaborating between the development team and operations to identify the pain points, identify the causes of the delay. If the DBA is not available, you can provide the instance. You don't need to learn Oracle. You can provide database instance using the tool called less Docker, infrastructure provisioning tool. If a development team needs Tomcat instance, you don't need to depend on Tomcat administrator using Docker, using the tool, DevOps tool for Docker, you can provide the Tomcat instance so the development team will continue their activity. DevOps is a methodology which promotes collaboration between development team and operations team, implements automation in software development lifecycle, and hence speeds up the software development process to meet the deadlines to the customer.
This is the concept. The term DevOps is derived from two important terms, one is development and operations. DevOps is a methodology, and this methodology can be implemented by using tools. DevOps is a concept. The concept will be practically implemented by using the DevOps tools. DevOps is a methodology. What it will do, it will collaborate between development team and the operations team. This collaboration helps in deploying the code into fa production faster. We can speed, we can deliver the code at faster rate and in automated way. When client gives the requirements, yes, you can give the requirements in automation, which enables in rapid development process. Okay, which enables in rapid development process. So when so as DevOps is gaining importance, there's a lot of a lot of openings for DevOps engineers. All the IT companies are implementing DevOps in their software development lifecycle. Hence, there is a reason, and hence there is an opening for DevOps engineer. The DevOps engineer responsibility is to communicate between development and operations team, implement automation in software development lifecycle. You have to behave from the operations team. You can you have to help the operations team with respect to tools like Ansible and Docker. You have to help the development team using the tools called as Jenkins. Finally, push the entire workforce and make sure that the client requirements are delivered in much more faster approach. And this methodology can be implemented by using tools. So these are the tools which will be covered as part of DevOps course. The prerequisite for DevOps is Linux. The prerequisite for DevOps is Linux. One minute. So let me see. The prerequisite for DevOps is Linux. So we'll spend some time understanding because all these tools will be managing using Linux commands. And then we we'll move on to version controlling tool called as Git, build tool called Maven, CICD tool called Jenkins, infrastructure provisioning and infrastructure uh, management tool and the orchestration tool called Swarm. Kubernetes will discuss most in demand. Ansible operations team will be very grateful to DevOps because of this tool called the Ansible monitoring team and understanding of Terraform. So these are the tools which will be covered in our DevOps course. There is a WhatsApp group. I hope you are already in the WhatsApp group. There's a WhatsApp group which is created for this batch which we have started today. I hope you are already in the WhatsApp group. If you are not in the WhatsApp group, Please join the WhatsApp community, not group. Please join the WhatsApp community for the updates about this particular batch. First three days are the four days are the free demo sessions. You can experience it. If you like the demo, you can proceed and make the payments. Every session is recorded. After the session, you'll get an access to the recordings. And if I use any notes and PowerPoint slides, you'll have access to the notes and PowerPoint slides also. A very important announcement. When you join this particular DevOps course, I have already completed one shell scripting course. This will be added advantage for DevOps option. This shell scripting course will be provided access for free. You will have access to 20 hours of shell scripting. Every DevOps engineer, if you put it, if you're good in shell scripting, it's an added advantage in your resume. If you join this particular course, the shell, shell scripting videos, which is the batch which I already taken a couple of months back, those videos will be provided for the paid candidates. Okay, so this information about the course, this is batch number, one minute, one more important point. This is batch number 317, which we have started today. This is a WhatsApp community. This is our website. I hope you already know it, but still in case if anybody are jumping directly. So this is the website. This is the Zoom link. This is a payment link. If you want to make the payment, you can make the payment. You don't need to make the payment now because this is the top. The score fees is six thousand four ninety, including all taxes. International participants can make the payment using credit card, international credit cards. Local participants can make the payments using Google Pay, using QR code, and all the stuff. Okay, clear, clear about this. So this is what I have planned for today's session. What's the plan for tomorrow? That's it. This is all about introduction to DevOps. More about DevOps you'll be learning anyways day to day. In tomorrow, we'll get it started with Linux. The complete DevOps tools we'll be implementing will be executing on AWS platform. That's why the title of this particular course is DevOps, AWS DevOps. The complete DevOps tools will be executing on AWS platform. That's why it's called as AWS DevOps. Okay, clear?
Yes, before ending, we'll be ending in just a couple of minutes. Before ending, any questions, please raise your hand. Aditya? Please join tomorrow using the same link, same Zoom link like how you are joined. Please join the session tomorrow. Yes, Aditya. Am I audible? Man? Yes, you are. Sir, I'm a fresher from Tripoli, sir. You are? I'm a fresher, sir. Okay. I have no knowledge in AWS or anything. Okay. No problem. So, you can join. By my recommendation is you can, after completing DevOps, I also want you to join AWS Ops. Okay. Because combination of skills are very important. Join yes, DevOps. Sir. Because whatever the AWS knowledge which is required for DevOps, I will I will teach here itself. Okay. So even though okay. you are zero in AWS, even though you are zero in AWS, you can understand my courses. But after DevOps course, I strongly recommend to learn exclusively AWS course also. Okay, Aditya? Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, I said for the previous courses and the upcoming courses, there is no AWS course. It will start. In maybe that. within week, you will get the update. Okay, so can I complete it after the AWS DevOps course? Sir? Yes, you can do it after DevOps. Yes, sir. okay. Sir. Thank you. I mean, it will be no problem, sir. No problem. I can understand. Even yeah. though you are, whatever the AWS knowledge is required for DevOps, I will teach. Okay. Oh, thank you, sir. Karthik, good evening. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. I'm audible, right? Yes, you are audible. How is the today's session? Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Yes, sir. actually, I have totally three years of experience as a production support engineer. Mm -hmm. Now I'm. Uh, I would like to switch the switch my career from production to DevOps engineer. DevOps. Because you are from the production support, we cannot go back to development track, is it, Karthik? Okay, yeah, we yes. cannot be into development track. So the option what we have is of as of now is DevOps is the right related technology and for us to upgrade. Yeah, and in my current project, uh, we use these all tools like Jenkins and uh, AWS and, uh, Very good. and these all. But Dota. I know the mechanism, but uh, I don't know how the backend work. Practicals will work. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anyways, we'll see practicals, right? You'll have a complete understanding each and every day. Yeah. I okay. may know the course duration. 45 days approximately. 45 days. Yes. And Sunil, uh, like, is there any uh, explaining, uh, like, in the project way? We already have completed four projects. Okay. We'll have project workshops also from the external okay. industry. Okay. So whatever yeah. we are learning, if you can showcase, that's more than enough. Yeah. Okay. And I, I also I already completed the AWS uh, course in the logic labs. Oh, okay. Very good, very good. Who is the Ankit. Ankit. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. You are in the right track, Karthik. Proceed. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. One more final call, Akim. Hi, Sunil. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Um, good afternoon. Yeah, I'm I'm from UK, and Thank United you. Kingdom. So, and, and I'm enjoying your training session today. Okay. So, but Today's I want to ask. Um, yeah, I want to ask. Um, after the completion of the, of this course, training course, are we going to have a certificate for this? There, there is no certification for DevOps. Okay. okay, I mean the training certification. That's you something. will get the course completion certificate from our training institute. Okay. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and okay. also, on um, I have an upcoming uh, um interview leading to DevOps. I don't know uh what question am I because uh I've been reading through lead um theoretically, when is, when but is, I, when I when don't is, have one practical when is, on. when is the interview? On this coming Thursday. Oh, it's very early. We are still in the day one. Okay. Yeah, but uh -huh. it's no problem. I'll, I'll try I've been planning some theoretical online, but I don't have the physical and done practical training on it. Okay. But um, no problem. I think with this yeah. class, a little I can catch up with. I'll try to. Yes. Try to progress on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, thank you very much. See you tomorrow using the so same link where we'll learn uh, basics of prerequisite for DevOps. That's we'll spend some time online. Have a good time. Thank you very much.